the top five reasons Evil Dead is better than Dead by Daylight. Now, a few things. First of all, when I originally made this video, I was just gonna list the top five reasons I love Evil Dead and not compare it to DVD, not bring DVD up at all. But as I was going through my list, I realized that it was impossible not to compare it to Dead by Daylight because it's the biggest asymmetrical game in town. I'm somebody who's been playing asymmetrical games uh, for as long as I can remember. I've played just about every asymmetrical game that's ever come out. I played Evolve. I've played years and years of Dead by Daylight. I played Friday the 13th. I played VHS. I've played last year. I've played Prop Night. Any, any kind of like asymmetrical game that's ever come out, I've played it. And it's impossible not to compare stuff to Dead by Daylight because um, Evil Dead's one of the most fun games I've ever played in the asymmetrical genre. And you, you just have to compare it to DVD to get an idea of what systems in this game are better than the top dog in town. And it's impossible for me to avoid comparing it to DVD. And the second reason I wanted to make this video is recently I've been making a ton of videos uh, that have been very critical of the game or have been talking about like stuff I want changed or how the devs handle this game and, and its future. And I've had people in comments saying like, man, do you even like this game? Like, yeah, you have a pretty pessimistic attitude. And I was like, you know, that's kind of true. I could see where somebody sees a lot of my videos that are fairly critical of the game and think to themselves, why does he even play it? Cause it seems like he's always just like criticizing it. And I wanted to make a video talking about all the things this game does extremely well and with that with that said let's get right into it number five on my list is sense of teamwork uh the thing that i love about this is that i'm always somebody who flocks to the group role in an asymmetrical game and i love the way they've done it in evil dead i think it's the best group role that i've ever seen in an asymmetrical game and the reason for that is it really feels like you have to work as a team. Now that's a double-edged sword. Like on the one hand, it, it makes you feel that much better when you do succeed. On the other hand, it makes it that much harder to succeed because in a game like Dead by Daylight, you can really get away with having one great player on the team and it results in the entire team winning the match. Assuming your team can know how to hold mouse one and stay on a gen, which I know is a lot to ask sometimes. <laughs> if you've ever played Dead by Daylight. But assuming people know how to do gens, if I'm playing Survivor and I'm a really good looper in Dead by Daylight, I can run the killer for most of the match and carry the rest of the team to a win. You can't really do that in Evil Dead. And I actually like that. I like that you have to work together. Um, I've always been somebody who enjoys like team sports growing up. I've never been somebody who enjoys like solo individual sports. So the idea that you have to work together, you have to try to have some sort of team synergy, you have to share resources and all this stuff really interests me and I think is a great strength of this game. Uh, number four, if it'll let me over there, is the variety of characters. Um, I love not just the variety of characters, but how different they all feel. One of the worst parts of Dead by Daylight is the fact that ultimately survivors um, are just skins when it comes down to it. Because of teachable perks, there is no difference between any of the survivors at the highest level. And so when you see somebody in the lobby, all you're really looking at is, oh, they have a cool skin that they bought off the store. That's it. I think that's super lame. I've never really liked that. I've, all, I've long... Uh, advocated for having like individual unique abilities on characters in dead by daylight for survivors the way killers do in that game but it's probably never going to happen unless they make a dvd2 um and i don't know how likely that is but we'll see i love in this game how not only does each character have their own unique ability each character has four unique abilities and not only does each character have four unique abilities they're part of a class that has their own unique abilities. And not only are they part of a class that has their own unique abilities, each class has their own unique perks. I love that. I love that each character could feel so different. 
I love that hunters have like crazy stamina, but are really bad at mitigating fear and have really low health. So they're glass cannons. I love that leaders are all about, you know, buffing their teammates. I love that warriors are like the tank melee damage dealers of the team who are bad at stamina and bad at fear management. I love that healers are bad at everything and they're supposed to be true healers because that's their main role is just healing their team. Everybody has a different role to fill and it feels different when you play each character. Like playing AOD Ash is way different from playing Cheryl. And I love that about this game. It's one of my favorite things about it. Number three is the game is surprisingly polished and balanced. And before you freak out and, and go into the comments, yes, this game does have balancing issues. It does have issues with basic unit possessions. Um, it probably has issues with hunters having too much stamp. There, there's a lot of stuff in this game that probably still needs to balance, be balanced. There's a lot of stuff in this game that still needs to be fixed in terms of bugs. I literally just made a video on that. Having said that, for a game that just came out, this game is freakishly polished and balanced. And the reason I say that is because, again, comparing it to Dead by Daylight, when Dead by Daylight first launched, holy cow, does this game look like... It looks like a triple-A game compared to the way DBD launched. If you don't remember, first of all, you want to talk about balance. DBD, when it first launched, the survivor side literally could not lose. An individual player could not lose. I want you to think about what Evil Dead the game would be like if there was a way to play or build a survivor to where they could never lose or never die under any circumstances. It doesn't matter if you summon a basic unit, doesn't matter if you possess an elite, doesn't matter if you summon a boss, one survivor can solo everything. Imagine if Evil Dead was like that, because that's what DBD was like when it first launched. In the original iteration of DBD, it launched with infinites on every map where you could not be caught under any circumstances. It launched with really broken perks that made it so you could not be caught under any circumstance. It was just, it was craziness. Um, and so knowing that this game is really balanced and polished in comparison, there was all sorts of like bugs and stuff in DVD two that made it super unplayable at the beginning of the match. And in a lot of ways, there still, there still are a ton of bugs in DVD. So this game is incredibly polished. The only thing that really happened um, on a regular basis that I thought, was particularly game breaking in Evil Dead was uh, animation canceling the original variation of it, not like the the stuff we see now with like puke animation canceling on Warlord, but like actual animation canceling that survivors could use too. And then that bug with Pink F, where if you p tried to pick some up when you were full, it would prevent you from like attacking for the rest of the match. Those two were extremely common and. Uh, it's particularly game breaking and those got fixed within the first week. So that's nice. Uh, this game is very, very balanced and I really appreciate that and polished. Number two, perks and abilities matter. This kind of goes hand in hand with uh, number four, but it's like I mentioned how characters dead by daylight for the survivor side anyway are really just skins, but this game one of the most irritating things about Dead by Daylight to me is the meta and how there's only really like four or five perks on either side that are remotely useful. And so then it, every game just becomes boring after a while because there's only so many times you could see a character use dead hard before you're just like, oh God, I'm over it. You know, there's only only so many times you could see someone use... Uh, I, I don't know, like ruin on the killer side before you're like, ah, I'm over this. And the biggest reason for that is because there's only four or five perks that are any good. The rest of the perks in the game are terrible. And that's why that meta develops. In this game, every perk makes such a huge difference. And again, like I mentioned before with teamwork, it is a little bit of a double-edged sword because it makes it so that if you are a level one, you are significantly underpowered compared to a level 25 or a level 45 demon. 
So there's a little bit of trade-off there, but in my personal opinion, I like it when progression matters. I like it when having somebody be at the highest level is way stronger than having somebody be at the lowest level because then it gives me motivation to progress and keep playing and it feels good to win matches because seeing me earn a bunch of points is way more satisfying because I know yes now I'm going to unlock this next perk that's going to make me do even more damage and it's going to be you know like it, stuff matters Whereas like a DVD, it's like, hey, I earned some blood points after a match and I just unlocked flip flop and that perk doesn't do anything. So it, it, it makes it very unmotivating to want to progress in that game. So I, I just love that perks and abilities matter in this game. It makes progression way more fun and it, it just it's cool. And and every ability is so unique and so strong that there's no real one character in this game that I feel like is useless. Like 90% of the perks in Dead by Daylight are useless to the point where there are some characters that you don't even need to level up to get their teachables because all their perks are bad. In this game, you really can level every character because every character is good in some way. Even the ones who are the worst, like Scotty, even they are useful. Even they can be really good in a match. Even if they're not as strong as the people ahead of them, they could still be very good on their own. And then the number one reason that I love Evil Dead and why I think it's better than DVD is the variety in matches and RNG. <laughs> this might be a controversial thing to say. I hate when asymmetrical games... Uh, try to be competitive and i don't mean that in the sense of like people who try hard to win that's inevitable i you know in a way you could say i am a part of that because i make videos and guides on how to be better at the game that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the type of people who try to make like an esports scene for an asymmetrical game i don't think asymmetrical games have any place in esports I think that they're supposed to be party games that are fun. Yes, you can be sweaty and try hard in the games, but if you try to get to that level of sweaty and try hard <clears throat> to where you're really like taking the game to its limits uh, in terms of balance and stuff like that, then you're it's terrible. I just don't like it. And that's where RNG comes in in this in this game and why I think it's it's better than dead by daylight is because rng is such an important factor in this game that it makes it less competitive and less sweaty than dead by daylight is and what i mean by that too is that this game has so many factors at play that are rng based that it makes it difficult to like get competitive and get upset at the way the game is going so like Think about all the different things that are RNG. There's crates, uh, the where the loot spawns is RNG and and what kind of loot spawns, where the pages spawn, uh, where the dagger and the lost pages spawn, where the dark ones spawn, um, what pops out of chests, what rarity those chests are, um, the fact like like I said on the first part, whether or not you find them and how much pink F you get throughout the match. Um, the different rarities and different weapon types in terms of your ranged weapons, in terms of your melee weapons. Like there's so many, there's so many factors at play that the RNG makes it so it's less competitive, but it's still also not frustrating. So an example I would give is like, if you have a lot of RNG in a game, the less steps you have in your game the more frustrating the RNG becomes. So let's say, for instance, there was only one objective in Evil Dead. Let's say the only objective in the match was the dagger spawns somewhere, and you just have to go collect it, and then that's the end of the match. You either collect it or the demon kills you all before, before you can do so. If that were the case, then RNG would become much more frustrating because the whole match is going to hinge on where that dagger spawns. If that dagger spawns in Bronson Cave, 
and you're playing against a necromancer, survivors lose. Because now the necromancer can put the flautist on top of the cave where nobody can get to it, and you're just gonna you're gonna die because you can't outlast that major buff the flautist gives. At the same time, if the dagger winds up uh, in a spot like next to that gas station, I don't remember if it was Shockley Auto or what, but there's a, a place where the dagger pages can spawn that has like a little rock ledge there. And you could just stand up there and it's really hard for the demon to get to you. And then even if they get to you, you can jump through a window to like get away from them. You basically don't have to fight and it's a free objective to the survivors if you get that spawn. If it spawns there, the demon loses. That would be really frustrating. But because there's so many things, like there's two objectives, the dagger and the pages. There's three pages that you have to collect. Then you have to defeat the dark ones. Then you have to protect the book. There's so many factors at play that it makes the game way less sweaty, but also like still fun. <laughs> it, it, that that's the best way I could describe it. I love the RNG in this game. Um, I don't like how things work in like Dead by Daylight by comparison because there's a lot less RNG in that match. It's basically like, um, well, th it's not that there's less RNG. There's less like factors at play. So it's a situation of like, <laughs> depending on the map you get, uh, as long as player skill is like equal the game's over as soon as you load into the map, depending on what it is, you know? Like, if you load into a map that has a ton of pallets and stuff that's very survivor-sided, like RPD, if the survivors are, are in are equal skill of the demon, they win. Because they're never going to be able to catch the survivors because the survivors just have so many tools at their disposal. Um, Vice versa, if you're playing demon and you load into a really killer-sided map, like Dead Dog Saloon, killer wins that's not the case in this game uh there's just so many factors at play that a demon can come back and win from a really bad start and vice versa survivors can too because there's so many factors at play there's so much rng um i love that it's like if a survivor early on finds like a legendary weapon that changes the whole match and then, like, you have to play around that as a demon. You have to understand, hey, this guy has a legendary weapon. I should probably try to possess him and use him to wipe out the team. I should probably try to avoid fighting that guy when I possess a, a, a demon or a, a basic unit, I should say. And I just, I love that. I love the RNG. I think all asymmetrical games should have that much RNG. And the variety of matches in terms of where things will spawn and where it takes you on the map and how different all the different spots on the map are makes for awesome and varied matches. And also how different all the demons play, how different all the characters are. It makes every single match play wildly different from one another. And I really like that. So these are the top five reasons why I love Evil Dead the game and why I think it's better than Dead by Daylight. If you have any reasons that you wanna share, about why you love Evil Dead. Hey, let me know in the comments. If you disagree with any of these, let me know in the comments. But as always, thanks for watching. And before I go, if you made it this far in the video, I just wanna say thank you once again. We just hit 2K subscribers uh, just a week after we hit 1K and got YouTube partnership. So hey, that's pretty cool. And uh, I think like 85% of people aren't subscribed. So hey, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Daily Evil Dead uh, YouTube videos on the channel. And that's going to do it for me. Let me know what you think. And thank you for watching.